At the age of 22, with no college degree, I took my CFP exam and scored in the 92nd percentile on my very first try, which led to me becoming the youngest CFP in Canada. Now, there's a 33% chance or more that you're going to fail this exam, and the progress of your career depends on you not being in that 33%. So here you are online looking for reassurance that you're not going to fail, trying to get some study tips. Well, guys, I have some great news for you today. Time to think like an investor. So why is it so crucial that we pass our CFP exam on the first try? Well, take a look at this. In a recent release about a year ago, one of these CFP exams showed that there was a 66% pass rate among first-time candidates, while there was a 30% pass rate amongst the re-attempting candidates. And so what this ultimately means is that if you don't pass it on the first try, it is kind of a filter and it's gonna get harder and harder to pass it again. I don't want this video to be some generic advice video that you can get from anywhere where you Google how to pass your CFP and all these standard answers come up. And so if you want the generic cookie cutter advice that everyone's gonna give you about how to pass your CFP exam that you could Google search or get from ChatGPT, well, just pause the video right here. And so I want to make this about how I pass a CFP exam, how I studied and the tools you can use to pass it on the very first time. There are two major prerequisites that are going to take all of the stress off. First things first, I think most people fail the exam because being a financial planner, being interested in personal finance is a day job to them. Hear me out for a second. There is a difference between understanding, right? Understanding something, you're standing under it, having the, the grasp on the whole thing versus rote memorization of facts and figures and ideas. If you have a foundational understanding of personal finance from reading and learning that you have done outside of the CFP curriculum, you have the base. Now, every little thing you learn in the CFP curriculum, you can just hang on it because you have the base already. You have the mental structure and the frameworks of personal finance and investing and insurance and estate planning. Now, all these new tools and tactics, you just hang them on there and it's all going to be cohesive instead of multiple different little blocks that you kind of have to memorize how they all connect to each other. And so my big pre qualification for how stressed you should be about the CFP exam is how much learning have you done outside of the CFP curriculum? Here's a question. How many of these books have you read? Like how many of those have you read? Have you read five of them? Have you read all of them? It's not as if there's going to be answers to the exam within these books somewhere. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is the more of these books you read, the more it tells me that this is not a day job to you. This is something where you have a foundational grasp and understanding. You have done the outside work to really learn. And now the CFP will become easy. It will become something that you just bolt onto your existing understanding. A great example of this was that when I was taking my CFP exam, there was a large debate in the broader sphere of investing between passive and active investing. It was one of the big stories of the day because if you're in a bull market, there was nothing to freak out about. And after the exam, a lot of people asked about a specific question on the exam. It was talking about the correlation between two comparable funds and their fees. And one of the funds had a very high correlation to the market and a higher fee as well, while one had a lower correlation to the market and a lower fee. And so the exam was asking us to determine which of these might be more appropriate. And a lot of the other students were asking me what I put down. They were confused. And I think all of them got the answer wrong because they weren't aware of the main foundational ideas investing, and they weren't aware of the broader context that we were in, which would teach them, hey, if you have a fund that is extremely correlated to the market average and it's charging a higher fee, well, that's actually technically closet indexing. The fund is behaving like an index, but has an active management type fee. And so for me, this was easy. And so I knew I got that answer bang on and a lot of other people got it wrong. This is what I mean. You know, these are the kinds of things that if you have the understanding, certain questions will just appear easy. Whereas someone who's just memorizing things, if correlations go up and fees go down, which one's the better option? If you're trying to memorize that, it just gets confusing. Part number two is field experience. Do you have your own clients? Have you run hundreds of your own meetings? Are you dealing with clients face-to-face? -face? Are you fielding questions? Are you doing meetings with new prospects? All these types of things, right? If you've actually done a lot of work in the field, you will be a lot more confident in what kind of questions come up and what is required of you on the job. And so here's my rule of thumb, okay? If you have read most of those books I put up, it shows that finance is something beyond uh, just a job for you. And if you have actually done real world experience for a couple of years, taking on your own clients, doing your own meetings, and you're taking this exam for your first time, I think your pass rate's more like 90%. Don't stress out too much. So if you don't check all those three boxes, how do we guarantee you pass the exam on your first try? Well, I wanna give you two tactics and strategies that will maximize your chance of success and also allow you to do it with way less time spent studying and way less sacrifice of your personal life and your work while you're studying for your exam. Strategy number one is very simple. It just requires a little extra money. Take a practice exam before you start studying. The real world, evolutionarily speaking, 
The world tests us first and we learn second. We learn through pain. We learn through getting burned. We learn through all these sorts of things. Personally, for me, I've never naturally been inclined to learn something if I haven't already been shown where I was very wrong about things beforehand. And so what I'd recommend you do is take a practice exam first. It's a little extra time, but it's high leverage because what you're going to get is a report showing you where you're weak and where you're strong. Then what you can do is you can map these to the exam weightings. Well, I'm already really good in a high weight area. Great. Let's focus some of my time elsewhere. Doing a practice exam first and seeing where you stack up in different areas, hugely helpful. Do that before you even study. That's tactic one. Now, what if I told you there was one huge hack that I use to make this exam a breeze and it's totally accessible online. It's just incredibly hard to find and no instructors really tell you where to find it. Everything that's going to be on the exam is actually in a database online. It's not cheating. It's on the actual websites of the CFP board and FP Canada, what we're looking at right now. And so if you go to a specific link, what will happen is it shows what we call the competency profile or the knowledge base. And so we can click into any piece of knowledge here and it will show us what's on the exam. Okay. Explain key trends impacting the financial planning profession down here. Explain FP Canada standards, council, professional responsibility, whatever. We can go through all the different areas of CFP. Let's go into economics. We look into micro and macro. We click into microeconomics theory. And so what I did is I didn't really study the textbook as much as I studied the glossary. I went to these areas, which you can find specifically on the website. By the way, this is the Canadian side. If you want both the Canada and the US side, and you'd like to have it all in a nicely displayed way and my guide on how to pass the CFP exam on your first try, you know, what books to read, where to find these specific glossaries that appear to be hidden, hit the link in the description below, and I will send off that whole package to you completely for free. It's not an exam prep. It's not a 40 page thing. It's just my little guide completely for free on how to pass a CFP exam on your very first try, where to find these links, where to find these glossaries series of the knowledge base for the CFP exam. You see what I did to make this exam easy is I sit down for an hour or 90 minutes and I would go through 10 of these things and try to explain them to a 10 year old. That was literally my study process. It was let's go to everything that the CFP board says will be on this exam and see if I can explain how that works to a 10 year old. And so I didn't really actually have access to a 10 year old, but I dumbed it down and dumbed it down until I understand it so well, I could teach it to someone else at a way lower proficiency level. And so for me, I believe that was the real tactic that allowed me to pass the exam. And so ever since any financial exam, that's what I do. I see if there's a knowledge base that you're supposed to know to pass. And I go through each individual item as many times as I can. And every now and then I'll stumble on one. I'm like, shoot, I can't explain that. And then, okay, after I'm able to explain it, well, shoot, I can't explain it in a really simple way. And so what I do is I work through these lists, find a way to explain them to a 10 year old. I find that when I do it this way, it actually adds to my foundational understanding instead of just me memorizing it. Right. And so if you've read the foundational books in finance and finance isn't a day job to you, if you are taking this exam for the first time, and if you have real clients, the chance you pass is extremely high. So what do you have to do? All you really have to do is take a practice exam first and then make sure you can explain every glossary item to a 10 year old. And that is my study guide. If you can do those things, I believe you'll pass. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. As I mentioned, if you want my free guide to passing your CFP exam on the first shot, hit that link in the description below. Otherwise, really appreciate you being here. Channel's growing like crazy. We love having you and we will see you in the next video.